Time to get rolling, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to another Dev and Chill with Memage. I'm your host, Memage. Good to see everybody in the chat. Let's see, we got uh, Catfish Water Dancer, uh, Caustic Sir, and Space Doctor out there at the moment. Uh, let's see, how's everybody doing today? Great! <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, so I need to get my Visual Studio opened, actually. It's not, not open yet. Let's see. <laughs> Where'd you go? Uh, you know what? I'll just go to the actual asset files. Just pop it open from there. At least my uni's giving me a little bit of trouble at the moment, so I should be able to uh, get us into the code easy enough, though. Let's see. One moment. Set up till 2 a.m. again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who caught the uh, Croatia-England game today? That was some uh, good stuff. Let's see, let's, where should we start? Let's go to, hmm. Let's go to the data classes real quick and pop up in the bio data perhaps. All right, I'll get this up on the screen in a moment. <laughs> that and there we go good good all right so let's see this is the bio data uh, it says for the bio statements so I also want to look at I don't know how much of this will actually directly use but I do want to look at some of the other relationship stuff data so prejudice, relationship data, anything else in here I want to grab? Personal dialogue, no. Personal profile data, that I want. This is why everybody is scared. All right. Ah, let's see, what am I working on? So I'm hoping to get some more work done on the relationship system. Um, let's see. So I'm trying to decide what element of it. Let's see, biodata is not actually related to the relationship system at the moment. Um, but I am going to need, uh, let's see, I suppose the actual adventure data. So let me jump over to get that open real quick. There we go. All right. So uh, each adventure does already have their relationship list. Uh, but what we don't have happening at the moment is any uh, modification to those relationships. So they, uh, they're they sort of theoretically formed when an interaction happens, but uh, we don't have any interactions happening yet. So I think the simple thing that I'm going to do right off the bat is just have uh, a, let's see, probably something like um, when you're on an encounter and somebody Let's say you fail a stage. Uh, let's say if, if you, if a given character failed in their role on that failed stage um, versus another one didn't, then let's say that the relationship between those two becomes more strained at that point. It's kind of like, hey, I, I did my end of this, you failed, and now both of us are getting the uh, shit end of the stick as a result. So let's see. So for that, actually, I'm also going to need to open the stages script. Mm -hmm. so it's not under map. Interesting. Let's see, where would that be? It might just be in the base one here. It is not. Okay, good. Let's see, you're redoing a lot of things in your game? Oh, right, right. Yes. Uh, yeah, I know you've been trying to get a hold of me on the... Uh, um, Discord, Cusk, sir. Um, we had a, of course, not that this is unusual, but uh, had a some emergency client stuff that 
kind of had all hands on deck over the last weekend. and So it's been hit or miss uh, communication-wise in terms of uh, non-essential stuff. But let's see. Let's see, poor rolls are fairly common every now and then. Disastrous rolls, however. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. So... So maybe I'll restrict it to the disastrous roles actually having a, a notable impact on the on relationships. Um, I mean, I, I'll probably still have some minor impact from the poor roles, uh, so that if the same person just keeps having minor fuck-ups constantly, then eventually you're going to start to not like that person. But yeah, somebody who's having disastrous roles that's actually detracting from the ability of the party to uh, succeed, those should definitely be a uh, more severe hit to the relationships. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember where on earth. Probably under quest stages. There we go. There's my stage document. Let's see. Let's see. The C sharp. Uh, I'm from phone. Cool. Let's see. Oh, the uh, the uh, code. Yes, the code in here is in C sharp. Um. All right, so where do we want to look at this? Uh, well, let's see, ratify success happens after that success has been determined. So let's real quick just jump to where in the document this guy lives. Or he's being called right there. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Parse main story chunk. Hmm. Maybe in proc games? No, not proc games. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go to this guy. Because here's where we parse all the stuff out. Mm. Let's see, and what was all that again? That's the setup, all right. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the best place to actually put this uh, check. So theoretically, all we really need is for the rolls to have happened. We don't need to parse the rest of the data in order to know that this is happening. Uh, so theoretically, it could actually happen in that um, uh, ratify success, because at that point we do have the uh, result. Okay, we've got, okay, so theoretically it happens right after the proc roll, or it could be part of the proc roll. Because we, yeah, so this is one of those uh, situations where this function is actually already kind of grown beyond the scope that it should be at. Because um, it really should just be, again, determining if the party succeeded or not. Um, then the rest of the stuff should be being called afterward based off of the return result. Because uh, we're, let's see, setting, setting up the basic uh, outcomes arguably could be done in here. Uh, of course, this stuff is all part of that, the role, so that's no problem. But like from here, from like here on, where we're like calculating damage and a bunch of this other crap, this sh probably should be moved out to a separate function. Um, in fact, I may just do that. Let's, uh... Make a private void. Let's see. Check procedural uh, effects. And for this, we'll take in a stage success value. All right. So. What else can we grab from in here? See, none of this is actually being affected by that specifically. HP damage is being filled out as a separate thing, but I could be grabbing that from that. Right. Oh, but we do have party contribution or card contribution as separate things that are being calculated in here, I believe. 
yeah, those are local to the function. Hmm. So, if I save those, look, I did save it into event power, and party contribution was saved as party power. So that stuff does exist inside of the results data. Okay. So I can get that, and the rest of this should be uh, calculable. So let me grab all this and move it into here. So I'm going to do more stuff in here. This is just checking the HP, but uh, so this function will be responsible for going through all of the procedural checks. Right, so let's see, we get that. Uh, then we need to make sure that we actually call this guy. Um, let's see. Let me jump back through the code up to where that guy was called. Do, do, do. Here we go. All right, so check those guys, and I want to grab that uh, result data result type and just pass it right in there. All right, let's go back to this guy. So now I need to actually generate these guys because they they should not exist in this uh, scope. Uh, one moment, that's going to complain to me. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's see, if about I the game I supported, the two, uh, uh, scores, five minutes, I'm happy, just scores, and I'm, so get, like, get yeah. okay, come on, England, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you, it was, um, it was certainly a rough game for, uh, for England, with the way it went, but, I, know, I was, I, I was actually secretly rooting for Croatia in that game, so, I, I turned out pretty happy, but, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's um, I know it's a pretty big disappointment for England. They've been uh, waiting for it to come home, and we'll have to wait another four years. Okay. Right. So. I think my intellis my IntelliSense is broken at the moment, so it's not going to tell me that these are not well, defined actually, here. But uh, I can easily define them. U equals. Let's see. So results data. Results data dot. And what was it called again? One moment. It's like yeah, totally fine. Go for it. Yeah, it's totally legit. Uh, Where did I save that again? Ah, right here. Like Party power. Party power. Let's do the dot. Parse. It's a little bit weird to uh, convert it to store it and then reconvert it back the other way, but oh well. I would set it up differently. Um, to just store the floats to begin with, but I'm not off the top of my head sure where all the, those values are being used, and I might have to do more conversions later because of that. So yeah, I'll do this for now and no, at a later date if it uh, seems to wise to just store as a float to begin with, then I can certainly do that. Yeah. I think it was event power? Yeah, event power. There we go. All right, so I got that stuff. Uh, let's see, stage container. I don't think that was being passed in by anything. Let's double check. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Party, 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 party. Do, do, do. All right. Oh, I hear you, Caustics. Are, I, I normally uh, root for a Netherlands in World Cup, and yeah, they didn't make the cut either. So it it start, started off with a uh, with a poor beginning. <laughs> All right. So do we call on the actual party? Yes, we do, and the party does not exist in here yet. Right. Uh -huh. 
party data, party, I believe, correct, yes, that should, that should take care of that bit, Good. oh wait, not quite, <laughs> let's uh, find the references and make sure we actually pass that in. Okay, so, uh, right, so I've split that off, and that's now in a its own contained functionality, so the uh, proc roll, now, let's see, it gets the modifiers, the difficulty, um, does the zone comparison check, generates the final required contribution, uh, let's see, gets information about the uh, yeah, skill the checks game. and how that affects the the party contribution, yeah, gets the wind of fate. Uh, let's see, adjusts the party contribution based off of that. Finalizes or saves the finalized uh, party power and event power. Uh, runs through the skill rolls. Saves out the outcomes. Checks for quirkiness, and then returns. Very good. All right. So this this function now correctly only does what it says it does. Processes the role. Um, then after that, we pass in that finalized result along with the party, and check the and check for procedural effects. So one of those procedural effects was of, co was of course the HP damage, um, and let's see. Theoretically, we should we also want the effects on the SP based off of some of this. Hmm. Oh, All right. Well, I will uh, maybe be able to obfuscate some of this in order to not duplicate more code than I need for when I do the uh, uh, spirit, but. Um, I guess I'll, not what really I'm trying to do at the moment, so I'll just kind of make a mental note to come back and do that later. Let's see, what are these scripts for? Uh, so this this particular part of the script is uh, the logic behind whether or not a party succeeds in a given uh, encounter. So the this first function up here that we were just in, uh, proc roll, that's what actually takes in all of the uh, factors involved in this encounter. Uh, aggregates all the data together and actually does the final uh, roll to see, or the combines the roles of your party members to see if they succeeded enough to defeat the encounter. And then based off of that also uh, has the random factor of does it have a quirky result or a normal result, and then kicks that out. And the part I just split out uh, was determining the procedural effect on hit points. So if they're in a type of stage that they could get hurt in, it, this is what runs through, finds out how much damage should be dealt, and then figures out how to divvy it out to the party members, uh, giving like preference to people who contributed to the stage, um, and so forth. Your code is spaghetti compared to this? <laughs> well, I mean, w one of the things that you will uh, have working on larger projects is you will either get more structured code or you will uh, learn to see the matrix through the Cronenberg mess that is uh, multiple programmers without a sense of uh, <laughs> architecture. By the way, that latter situation usually lands you with a code base that is completely uh, unupgradable and uh, so bespoke that it's useless once the project is done. We're attempting to develop things in a way that allows us to while we can't use like in whole the code base to just you know plug and play a different thing, uh, there are several different modules within it that we can take and just use in other other products that we create internally. All right, so uh, again, we have the whole section here that is dedicated to the uh, procedural hit points. So now I want to have a section that looks through procedural relationship changes. So for this one, let's see, we're gonna need to consider a couple things. Um, first off, I think I will say, um, hmm, if, 
we can always expand this later, but just to have something in play, we're going to say if result is equal to uh, negative or result is equal to quirky negative. So I'm only going to do a relationship loss if they actually failed the stage. Um, you know, if, if somebody had disastrous performance and you still succeeded, then people may overlook it and move on. Who sneezed? That was my senior engineer, Jack Bajan, I think. No, that was me swearing. Oh, okay. His, his swears sound like sneezes. <laughs> okay. We also say bless you when he swears. Yes, yes, we say bless you when he swears. Because we we feel so good about that. See, with a different narrative and character conversation, depending on the type of outcome and who's in the party, plus traits, plus relationships. Ah, <laughs> yes, yeah, no, totally. Hey, Eddie, how's it going? Uh, yeah, the uh, so I haven't actually given uh, um, Sean any tokens to read relationship stuff yet. So the results do not hinge on uh, party relationship as of yet. Uh, but there are going to be both procedural and uh, story token things for that in the future. Um, the, the simple kind of story token thing will simply be that uh, adventurers' contributions will be reduced if they are partied up with somebody that they really don't like um, to kind of reflect the fact that they're distracted and don't work well with that person. Um, but again, once we once we have the tokens in, that will allow uh, Sean to do some crazy stuff where he can like... Uh, branch the narrative within an encounter based off of if there are like good friends or serious enemies in the party. But uh, that's mostly going to have to be a, I need to have a good talk with uh, both Eric and John about how to exactly do that because it gets pretty complicated on the uh, token parsing side to f try to grab data from two different uh, variable sources and then compare them in the uh, string engine. That's a little bit uh, finicky. But I'm sure we can figure out the, the best way to do it, uh, but I mostly want to make sure that I'm not developing really complicated functionality for something that he's not going to use. So I want to make sure that I figure out what exactly the situations that he wants to use the relationship engine for within the narrative engine, and then I can focus on developing uh, tokens for that stuff. All right, so if we have a failed stage... Then I suppose we want to loop through and let's see, let's say adventure or data. Uh, actually, I want this to be a list, I think. Yeah, let's make a list of adventure data. Uh, these will be. Um, Poor, pores, and we'll have another one. Are you fucking kidding me? I'll call them super pores, and these are the disastrous people. All right, so now I want to go through all of the ventures in the party. So, party dot add. Ah, right, my intelligence is broken. Uh, let's see, is it? Capital A, or now, I could look for um, the heroes instead, because heroes should be only the ones that actually participated, and that I believe is yeah. Heroes is local to the class, so I can grab that just directly. All right, so heroes dot for each. For each X, we want to say, let's see, uh, no, no, you know what, not like that. Let's do, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, okay, here's what I'll do. Instead of doing a for each on Heroes Array, I'll instead do this, equals, Heroes dot find all find all x 
where x dot, uh, okay, so that's going to be, uh, actually, does the hero store their own role? They might not. Um, let me th figure out where that's happening real quick. Um, that should be coming up here, I think. No, no. Well, it's still going to be embedded in here. Let's go to definition and find this guy. Uh, da -da. Okay, so that's getting the potential stuff. Get skill usage. Performance check. That's what I was curious about. So performance, um, where is that actually being stored? Because I know it is being stored somewhere. Actually, maybe just be getting... Ah, skill roles dot add performance. Okay. So that's just in the result data. Okay. Okay, so in the result data skill roles is where I'll find that stuff. So that's going to be again result data is local to the class. So I should be able to just grab that. Here. In the meantime, I just rebuild that so it stops yelling at me. Okay, and we'll get rid of that too for now. Okay, so result data, or is it results? Probably results data. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's see, what do I got going on here? Let's see. Let's see, discussions of time zones. Oh my gird. Ah, all right. Catch you later, Kossixer. Have a good one. Sleep well. Let's see. All right. So yes. Results data dot skill rolls dot. Okay. So I want to find the skill roll where uh, y dot. Hmm. That's a skill attempt, right? So, so, do we just store? I think we just store the adventurer directly into those things, don't we? Hmm. This is the other interesting thing about working on a very large project, by the way. Stuff that you wrote yourself, you still will forget how it works because of. Uh, how long you can go between working on different systems. Hmm. All right. Uh, member functions, external. Do, 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 do. I'm looking for my skill check. Do, do, do. Where are you? Ah, performance check. There it is. All right, so that returns the skill attempt, but let's see. Okay, so it does have an adventure ADV. Very good. All right, so you dot ADV. Okay. Where? All right, well, that's just going to return the skill attempt. I don't really want that. So let me say, hmm. Let's find all. Find all skill attempts where the, let's see. Performance, yeah, there we go. That's what I want. Performance is equal to. Oh, let me fix that. Performance is equal to. So performance 
Uh, four. All right. So that gives me all of those. And then we want to say dot for each. Uh, X. Pours dot add. X dot ADV. All right. So to just quickly talk through what this line does. Uh, again, I am grabbing all of these skill roles from the stage. Then I'm finding all of those skill roles where the performance was poor. Then for each of those skill roles, I'm adding the associated adventurer to the pores uh, list. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing for super pores, except we'll be looking for, of course, disastrous instead. And adding, of course, to super pores. All right, so now I have all of the adventurers who rolled poorly and all of the adventurers who rolled disastrously. Uh, let's see. Now, actually, I also want the list of adventurers who uh, well, everybody else, I guess. So, let's say copy the others all right so now what i want to do is just look through the heroes and dot actually actually maybe i don't even need to, yeah i don't think i need to create the list new like that i'll just say heroes dot find all uh let's see find all let me just call this you know what make sure that let me, uh, let me refactor these real quick. Uh, call that X, X, and these, this one, Y, and Y. And then this one, Z and Z. And this one, Q and Q. Okay. So then this one will be I. Okay, so find all I where, uh, let's see. Pores dot exists I and I want that to be does not so it does not exist and super pores dot exists I close off the end of that all right so now I'm just saying, hey, uh, now let's go through the heroes and find every hero who is not in either the poor or super poor's list and add them to the others list. So now I've got delineated the people who contributed uh, well to the stage versus those who did not. And with this data, I can now basically loop through this and say, okay, um, let's update the relationships of uh, everybody in here to reflect this. So uh, one thing I'm going to say is, uh, again, this, this only takes effect when there are people who did well on the stage. Uh, so we're only going to loop through the others and then modify the relationships associated with them. Uh, if, if everybody failed on the stage that failed, then that's just going to be kind of a learning moment, brothers in arms type thing where everyone's like, ah, well, we got our, we got our ass beat there, didn't we? But uh, no one's going to think illy of each other because they all know that they got stomped together. So now, if there are super poor characters, we know who to blame. Exactly, Drac. Exactly. Okay. So, I'm going to, since I'm going to want a little bit more logic going on here, uh, I'm not just going to do this as a uh, um, uh, lambda statement. I'm going to actually build this out. So, adventure data ADV in the others. All right. The others, please. There we go. Okay. So I want to say, hmm. So I'm going to need to think this through a little bit because uh, so each. Eventually, again, we're going to have uh, um, 
uh, unilateral relationships. Uh, and in fact, the functionality for that is already in, uh, but for the simplicity of display for this first rollout of the system, we're going to just have uh, uh, bilateral relation relationships. So everyone will think of each other the same manner um, as the other, if that makes sense. Basically, if, uh, if A thinks B is awesome, then B also thinks A is awesome. There, there won't be any situations for this first pass on the relationship, relationship system where one person likes somebody who hates them. That's, that is an eventual goal, but not what we're going to be rolling out to begin with. The the yes, the update will be called the friend zone. Well said, Rich. Well said. Okay. So, uh, let's see. At this point, I basically want to say, um, well, we're actually going to have a uh, nested for each here. Let's see. Uh, for each adventure data fail in poor pores. <clears throat> so let's see. Nev dot. Okay, I need to remind myself what the uh, what is the variable set that's being used for this. Uh, it's not in the primary skill category or the patron effector. In fact, those should be moved out to separate classes. It's kind of ridiculous that they're being stored in the top of this one, but again, I will get to that later. Because holy shit. Refactoring needs to happen, but there's so much of it that needs done that <laughs> if I focus on refactoring, I would seriously clean up the code uh, in about three months, but also make no progress on any bug fixing or uh, feature development in that time frame. <laughs> so as an engineer, I'd love it. Uh, the, the fan base probably wouldn't be quite so happy. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. So somewhere down in here is the relationships. <laughs> Let's see, all sorts of properties. Ooh, we've got some uh, functions even here. But I think we still got more properties down here. Yeah, there's some. Ugh, this is this is horrendous. And there's the spirit points set up. Cool, cool. Uh, where, oh, where is get familiarity? Okay, that's how familiar the tavern owner is with the character. That's fine. Do, 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 do. Good grief. Bunch more functions. Da, 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 da. Come on. Uh, let's see some more properties. Lovely. Yes, the organization in this file is uh, painful. Uh, member objects, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Uh, relationships. All right. So. I want to say, let's see, if pdv dot relationships dot uh, has key, I think, is the proper way to access that. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Good, good. Has key. Fail. That means they have a relationship. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. So if they do have a key, or if they do have a relationship, then we simply want to say relationships sub fail. Uh, then let me verify relationship data, star V, and affinity. All right. So that dot of Affinity. Uh, let's see. Plus equals negative one. 
we'll just have it drop by one point if it was just a standard failure. And uh, um, else they did not have a relationship, so we want to add one. ADV dot relationships relation relationships dot add the key of fail and let's see a new relationship data you have a constructor you do not hmm all right. Do, do, do. How do I want to set that up? Um, I probably want to allow for a constructor in there, don't I? All right. So public relationship data target ID and affinity, and we're just going to underscore those so we can tell the difference. Now I also want a public relationship data. That's just a default constructor uh, because I want to make sure that our uh, JSON serializer can uh, still create this class without having issues. Uh, oh, right, I need to specify that that's an int and affinity, you should be a float. Okay. So. Uh, right. Target ID equals underscore target ID and affinity equals underscore affinity. All right, uh, so that gives me what I need there. And now I can say I will want fail dot uh, enter data. What is your, I think it's just your row ID. But I need to verify. <laughs> Might actually be under the character data. I think it is. Yeah, let's just go directly to the character data. <laughs> Right, and you open that separately. Fine. Well, oh, let's just grab that value. So fail dot character data dot row ID. I believe it's something like that. Uh, let me actually pop open my characters DB script and verify that base characters DB. All right. So where is okay character container? Uh, da, da. Okay, it's actually going to be part of the base table out of container, probably. DB tools. Can I easily access that? Yeah, actually, I may be able to. Yeah, okay. Well, mm, is that accessing? Let's see. I don't know. Effect. No. Hmm. I think it is that, because that's the same. The row ID actually comes from the uh, uh, table data container base class. So that should be the same for all table data containers. All right, so that's the target ID. And then the new value will simply be negative 1F. All right. So that sets up that one. We also need to do the same check for the other direction. So if fail dot relationships dot has key ABV. And we're basically just going to duplicate this functionality, but reverse the uh, people. Uh, -da. So it's going to be fail, fail, and ADV, ADV, ADV. 
All right. So that handles the... the pores. So now we want to basically do the exact same thing for the disastrous, but we're going to have it be a five value instead of a one. So notably more significant. So you can, the, the same character can uh, be responsible for a failure and uh, draw ire from people who were contributing properly uh, five times in order before they've matched the uh, same amount of disdain that would happen from somebody who uh, had a disastrous performance. Okay. So again, this th this likely seems like a bit of duplicate functionality, given that uh, we're setting the same values in relation to the same uh, relationship for uh, both characters, uh, when at the moment the relationship only describes the one relationship, uh, but it's so that we have the structure in place so that we can do the unilateral relationship changes later on. So, uh, with that in place, we theoretically now have uh, adventurers' relationships being affected by their performance in a stage. So that's a nice uh, thing to kind of check off the list, because that means that the relationships are now changing. Uh, the relationships, again, were already in the game uh, as of, let's see, about two, three weeks ago. But uh, this will be the first time that they can actually be affected by the ongoing progress in the game. So you'll be able to see, once we implement the UI <laughs> to show you the relationships to begin with, uh, you'll then be able to see the uh, relationships actually start to change over time. Hey, Rockland Ambition. Welcome to the stream. Always glad to see another moderator jump in. Keep, uh, keep tabs on all these wily fans. <laughs> yep, all the near duels. All right. Of course, it'd probably help if we stopped promoting the near duels to moderators, but. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Got a few more minutes to stream, but uh, let's see, may fiddle around with some stuff. Uh, any questions I can answer out there? Be uh, happy to field some stuff that uh, relates to either the engineering or the tech side of the game. <laughs> yep, yeah. Is it uh is it particularly hot over in England at the moment? Or are you just uh referring to the burning rage of getting beaten to a pulp by Croatia? True, true. No, it, was, it, was, it was a good match. It was a good match. Gotta love any match that goes into overtime. All right. So, hmm. Now, something that would also be kind of fun <laughs> is if we did something like Let's see. Let's say that uh, everybody succeeded and the party uh, had a positive outcome to the stage, but they would not have succeeded if everybody rolled uh, standard contribution. If that's the case, that means that somebody rolled an excellent or heroic. So in that situation, we could specifically call them out and be like, hey, let's bump up the relationship between all of the other people and that person as a uh, recognition of, oh, hey, they, they, they fucking saved us because, yes, all of us tried hard, but we were going to fail. And then that guy really came through for us. That could be a fun additional aspect to it. Yeah. 
Yup. <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's see. So I'm foreseeing some interesting issues in trying to calculate that, though. So, well, not really, I suppose. It's really just a matter of uh, getting what the expected contribution was and comparing that to um, what the required uh, contribution was. So if the if the expected was less than required, but they still succeeded, again, that means that somebody rolled a uh, an excellent or heroic. So at that point, I can just do a find all on the performances, similar to up here, find the, find the people who performed heroically, and uh, then modify the relationships accordingly. Uh, still not something I'm going to do in the next four minutes, but let's see. Can the system differentiate between random beast monster encounters and random human encounters? Often you meet a group of uh, ninjas or witches or elves, and you end up eating them. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. Um, so the this is actually uh, a situation where our monsters database has never actually gotten hooked up on the back end. Uh, so all of the monster stuff is kind of being, uh, uh, let's see, it's not completely hard coded. Uh, we've, we've just mimicked a uh, lesser form of a procedural generation system for the monsters. Uh, so we need to get that hooked up so it's actually drawing from the database stuff and pulling in uh, all the stuff that the writers have. Because that database stuff also has flags associated with each monster type that would allow uh, Sean to uh, specifically call for a beast type monster or a humanoid or a fire aspected monster, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's, th that's something that is theoretically in the pipeline, uh, but um, it's been waiting to be finished hooked up, hooking up for about six or seven months now when we've just never gotten enough priority putting on that task to actually get it done yet. Um, See, this is, this is something that everyone should take uh, uh, a big lesson from. Uh, the, main, the primary reason why this uh, problem has not been fixed is because a suitably decent hack was put in place. Uh, you'll find this with, with art also. Uh, if you put something that looks halfway decent into a game, uh, it will take fucking forever before you get good art for it because nobody wants to put priority on something that's already kind of okay. Uh, versus if you uh, if you mail it in and put a, a shit piece of art in, or a terrible hack in, that'll be one of the first things to get uh, upgraded to something good later. So, so you always let your programmers do your temp art. Yes, always let your programmers do your temp art. It's, a, it's the best way to ensure that you get good art later. <laughs> <laughs> or temp art. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so... Again, this, this issue with the monsters thing was uh, a situation where I, I implemented a bit too decent of a hack, and uh, so we've not been able to get enough uh, anger built up about it to fix it yet. Kind of stupid how that works, but... How dare you, you jerk! Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something that I've been trying to get through my, my thick skull for a long time, but... <sighs> when, when you're prototyping, uh, gray box it. Like that's the, that's not just to speed you up, but it's to ensure that you don't stick with your prototype later. Like it's it's kind of pathetic, but <laughs> it is what it is. Hmm. Let's see. Oh wow. Nice. There's a special deal for buying TVs in Croatia, where if, uh, if the TV, sorry, if the, if the Croatian team uh, pass the semifinals, then they'll refund 50% of the TV cost, and if they uh, win the cup, they'll refund 100% of the cost. <laughs> yes, there is. There are uh, TV vendors who are really hoping Croatia makes a Strong showing and then fails in that last match. <laughs> yeah, I saw a couple of newspapers referring to the Croatians, uh, the Croatian team as the Cinderella story of the year. We shall see. We shall see. We'll be checking the glass slippers on Sunday.
like to be beaten by the French. [laughs] All right, um, so. French is so much more glorious. Thinking. So, what what are some other places where we'll want uh these relationship values affected? Um, so something just off the top of my head would be, like, uh, maybe if a character participates in the same drink chain combo Uh, boost the relationships of everybody involved in it. To kind of, uh, again, go off the idea of "hey, if you're if you're drinking together then your relationships improve." Um, that's that's not a universal truism, by the way. [laughs] Uh, you can certainly have very negative relationship things happen drinking with somebody, but the, uh, the general principle of the game is uh that friends can be made over drinks. So we want to, uh, reflect that directly in the code by saying "if you're drinking together then relationship goes up." Maybe we can eventually get, uh, implemented situations where people get where specific characters get belligerent when drunk. And that can [laughs] negatively affect their relationships, but that would be the exception rather than the rule. Hmm, so what's Jenn talking about? It's like something something about her bra being able to tell the weather? [laughs] Yeah, yeah. She's like "It's like I don't like wearing clothes." Oh, yeah, that's true. Say "Oh, it's like they're attracted to me now." [laughs] Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like the the mole thing. [laughs] Yeah. This is getting way too heavy to handle. Um Yeah. Oh, I need help again. [noise] Mm. This easy. Okay. Oh, crap. You need a big cloth? Or something like that? Okay. [noise] Oh, crap. You need like a thing of like those things. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Or like, not like [laughs] What's the other word? It's like, when you tie a knot in your ribbon, you kinda want it to be uh, your turn. I know, I know, I know. What's the other word? It's like, when you tie it or like wear it on your shirt. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, but it's like a hat. Yeah. Like a hat or hat, yeah. Hat hat hat. [noise] Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with back to wrapping this. K, we're good? All right. All right, everyone put your equipment down. Chancey's doing everything. [laughs] I concur with that assessment. Actually, this is not gonna work. This is actually not gonna work. Should I put one more layer on top of this for Why? Nah. It's gonna seep through, for sure, but whatever. It's getting there, but I think we need like a whole bunch more flour. Maybe it's just me? Studying? No. Hmm? Maybe it's just me? I dunno. Chancey, what's your wi-fi password? [laughs] Uh, two five one one five Wait, hold up. Hold up. What's the wi-fi? Uh, the one with the five G in it. There's two with five G. The closest one with the five G. Are you f f oh, or oh nine nine? Sorry? Are you C six four Check the router. Oh, I have it on my Wi- F- I have it on my phone. One sec. No, no, it's okay. You stay there. I I'll just shout to you. This is done. K. Where's your oil? Yeah, what's the wi-fi? I'm gonna need s- Here, I'll show it to you in one sec. Can you hold the cutting board? Okay. What cutting board? The wooden one. Dude, guys! Usain Bolt lost. Yeah, no kidding. Really? Why? I think he cut himself. There's no way that's possible. Yeah, it's not possible. It's not even humanly possible. It's not even humanly possible. Where's the cutting board? Just gonna use this whole thing. Okay. [noise] Oh, there it is. Uh, actually just a second. Yeah. Or no, cuz it's not done yet. Yeah, because the other guy's gonna come in and crack it up in like two minutes. In three minutes, sorry. Yeah. Uh he's just gonna come in and crack it up and like start blasting it. Oh. Cuz it's not done yet. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. It's actually not gonna blast it. Uh it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh no, I put it on the wrong one. Sorry. Oh, I see what you guys have. Um That's fine. That's totally fine. All right, so I probably need this more. So, uh, time to get out of the way. I will need some more of these. Who's been putting the salmon on top of the lid? Well, you guys can put it on the counter. You can put it on the counter. I'm not in the kitchen. I'm not in the kitchen. Yeah, it's fine. Well, actually no, it's Mike's, so Mike, I need, I need some of this. Take overtime. [noise] Okay. Yeah, no worries. [laughs] Okay. Uh, I guess I'll come in here and I'll do some cooking. [laughs] No, you're not gonna cook for the oil, just leave it for now. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, no. Why would I cook for the oil? Cuz you said it needs more oil. Okay. No 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 no, you said it needs more oil. Careful. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, it's gonna take some more. That's fine. That's fine. No 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 no, you got it. You got it. Okay. That's yours, Watt. Thank you. Ooh, you have a pretty fancy knife. You got a pretty fancy knife. I don't know if I'm gonna use it, but I'm gonna do it. Um I need to look up Hammond. I always wanted to use a knife. Hmm. Oh, what was the other thing I was gonna look up? Hammond. Uh, we're gonna look up Hammond. I don't know where the other two are. Oh! I might know where Jen is, but she won't tell me. I do not have Jen's number. Yeah, yeah. You do not. Do we need anything else besides this? Um, I don't think so. Just just remember to check that oven. Mm. And that's, that's not gonna, that's not gonna be used. Yeah. Hmm, we should find you a place to put this. Yeah, and then Yeah, well that that works too, if you really want to know. [noise] [laughs] Well, we don't really have a place to put it. Yeah. [noise] Okay. [noise] Y- you wanna just have Jen or Mike just put it in there, and then just have to call Mike to come in? Yeah, and then just have to call Mike. Yeah, I think we can actually just have one conversation with him. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we don't really have a lot to do. Oh no, never mind. There's Jen. Mhm. Um, oh yeah, well that's why I'm like [noise] Is there anybody else coming? You know what, um, y- you guys can take the, you guys can take the other two. Yeah, we can take the other two. Ye
So definitely jump on there. Uh, and also certainly if you have ideas for, uh, for the game of how to improve it or th things you'd like to see, uh, definitely jump on there because we, we really want feedback on how to continue evolving this game in a way that uh, makes it more interesting for all of you guys. Um, let's see, I think that's mostly it. So let's see, who do we got? We have had uh, Catfish Water Dancer. We had uh, Caustics are in here earlier. We have AD, Space Doctor, uh, Rogue Ambition, Drakdorai, or a Feral Drakdorai specifically. Uh, let's see, I think that's all the people who have been chatting. A couple of workers in the background, but uh, I'll, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the uh, work and lurking people. I've been one of those myself many times. Uh, love watching Twitch streams while I'm fiddling around with my own tasks. So I hope you've enjoyed listening, even if you were not able to watch directly. And uh, yeah, I'm, it's awesome hanging out with you guys. Uh, again, big thanks to the moderators for hanging out and uh, keeping an eye on everything. Uh, luckily, we've got an awesome community that generally doesn't need moderation, but it's good to know you guys are there if we need you. And I guess that will be it for now. So thanks again, guys, and have a great one.